fish land of voids. And of the shipboard romance, I guess. Oh, we'll see you in London. We'll be staying at the Rochester. Yeah, you sure will see me. And book there, too. Oh, oh well. <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Anderson, Mr. Anderson. Alan's staying at the same hotel as us in London. Ah, oh, nice. Very nice. For someone. <laughs> the match? I'll keep the warehouse under observation and raid them when they make the delivery. Yes, sir. Oh, Frank Simmons on your line, calling from the Queen Elizabeth. Hello, Frank. How's the sea air? I thought you'd like to know that Alan Blake's just landed in Britain. Yes, he's staying at the Rochester. So is Elliot Henderson with his wife and daughter. No, Blake didn't pull a single contract during the voyage. Much too busy getting friendly with the Hendersons. All right, Frank, thanks. Enjoy your shore leave. <coughs> Tell them to cable Captain Nielsen, New York City, please, the latest on Alan Blake. He's here again? For the second time in six months? And this time he's on business. He's ingratiated himself with Elliot Henderson, the chain store millionaire. They're all staying at the Rochester. Cozy. Well, I'll get the hotel detective to keep an eye on him. Yeah, both eyes and a radar screen. A con man like Alan Blake doesn't pal up with a millionaire because he believes in togetherness. I know what Blake believes in. The redistribution of wealth in his favor. <laughs> Breathtaking. Absolutely. All right, baby. Alan's drunk in the view. Now let him have a chase he can taste. What'll it be, Alan? <laughs> well, nothing right now. Thank you, Miss Anderson. Happy holiday. Oh, uh, Alan, are you going to stay up here and have lunch with us? Well, I thought perhaps you'd all join me for lunch. After your kindness and hospitality on the ship, I felt... Oh, thanks, but uh, I have a million phone calls to make. I didn't know there were a million couturiers in London. <laughs> I can't make it either, Alan. A business, you know. This isn't entirely a vacation for me. Well, that seems to leave us. Okay. <laughs> I know this is marvelous. Oh, good. <laughs> Expect us when you see us. Bye-bye. Oh, it really is a fabulous view. I never get tired of it, no matter how many times I see it. Me neither. You see, that young fellow doesn't have a monopoly on romantic double-meaning conversation. Any of your thoughts? Uh, darling, what do you think? I know. I pride myself on being a judge of character. You know that. That Alan's a fine young man. About you. You've only known me a few days. You don't know anything about me. Oh, yes, I do. I think I, I first fell for you when I, I saw your picture in the newspaper. Did a bit of research. Father's here on business. Mother to buy clothes, and you're here to visit all the London art galleries, right? Right. So tomorrow, it's art for art's sake. Art for your sake. I can't tell a Grandma Moses from a Goya. Alan. Hmm. I'll never forget today. My first in London. My first alone with you. And you'll never forget tomorrow. I promise. Why did you wait up for me, Mother? I said, expect me when you see me. I wanted to see you. Something special. Is it, baby? You are happy about Alan and me. Oh, yes, I'm happy. And so is Daddy. Oh, <laughs> oh David. Here's one for your memoir. Constable delivers baby. Well, that's not unusual. Constable Stork. Oh. Is there a reply from Nielsen, New York? Oh, yes, Blake. Nothing on Blake lately. Keep him in England. You're welcome to. 
What about the hotel detective? Well, Blake took the daughter out to lunch yesterday. He didn't get back till 1.30 this morning. Long lunch, wasn't it? They seemed happy. Oh, come off it, David. What, boy meets girl, love at first sight? Uh, it could be. Point of interest. When do you give a man with a record the benefit of the doubt? Not very often. This might be such an occasion. You keep in touch with that hotel detective, David. So much for the old masters. Now our tour takes us to Chelsea. What's Chelsea? Oh, the Bohemian bit, exhibitions by contemporary artists, that sort of thing. Look, it's just quarter to one now. That's time for... For lunch. I'm starved. Oh, no. No, no, you can't look at the work of unknown artists on a full stomach. In order to appreciate it, really, you've got to be starving like that. <laughs> okay, come on, let's go. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I just left the shop for a minute, and when I came back, the till was empty. I'll be okay, all right. You see, when I went round the and I came back, and all that thing was scattered all over the floor. I'll be with you in a minute, sir. There's people waiting here. Make up your mind. No, I don't like it. Different. As you wish, madam. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks much. Good day. Goodbye. Can I help you, sir? Uh, we'd like to see the special display in the back room. Oh, yes. Sure, yes. Now, come on, let's move. A million dollars. Let's go. Oh, Alan, I can't. Of course you can. You know, it's essential. Nina has to be seen around town with me this afternoon. Now you can do it. You've got to, baby. I look awful in high-heeled shoes. Shut up, Phil. Come on, Erica. Alan, just one point. All right, what is it? Quickly. When you get the money, what are you going to do with her? I mean, she can talk, you know. Philip. You'll follow the routine exactly. And that doesn't include murder. It's just a thought. Let's go. Thank <laughs> you. 
can't resist it. She'll love it. I knew it. Make sure that the doorman remembers that Nina came back with me ten past six. Well, what I've got to do is to go up to the penthouse, then go out by the service stairs. And the, uh... Yes, the coat. Take it off. Carry it over my arm with the lining side out. The wake? Off. Yeah. Not a moment too soon. It's killing me. Bye-bye, Nina. Tonight at 11. Oh, hey, you forgot your book. Well, shall I take it in, sir? Oh, never mind. I'll be seeing her tonight anyway. There we go, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, driver. expecting to phone so late. Well, I did, I did have a message for you, but, uh, well, well, I can't talk now. Um, older generation, you know? Yeah. Uh, that's right. Uh, yes, those lecture notes. Yeah, thanks, Myra. Bye. That was Myra Phelps, studious type. Everyone goes to Myra Phelps when they miss a lecture and need notes. Sounds like she wears glasses. Oh, no. Attractive girl? Not especially. Oh, well, back to the midnight oil. Well, Commander, what's your theory? Well, Mrs. Gideon, I spend 90% of my life with liars. Believe me, that boy is lying. Good heavens. What do you suspect him of? Philandering. Nina! Nina! She isn't here. It's only 10.30. Well, if that makes her four hours late. So she stood us up. Instead of a stuffy business dinner, she's out on the town with Alan. But I mean, she could have phoned or left a message or something. Where could she be? Home. I'll murder her. Now, relax. She's only stood us up. <sighs> oh, is Nina with you? No, I brought her back here at ten past six. You, uh, you brought her back when, Alan? Ten past six. Been plenty of time for a dinner date with you. Elliot, call the police. Darling, wait a minute. But anything could have happened. She's missing in a strange city. For God's sake, Felisa, you can't call it missing. Four hours late. What would you call it? Uh, Mrs. Henderson, I was going to meet Nina here at 11 o'clock to go dancing. Perhaps we could wait till then. It's only half an hour. Good idea. Well, all right. Until 11. Well, I can foresee it telling off when Nina does get here. I'll be in my room. And Nina will be in this room real soon. You'll see. Thanks, Alan. Good night. Good night. Oh, you surprise me. It's not like you to panic. Well, it's not like Nina to be away from home for four hours without phoning. She's never done this before, never. Oh, will you relax? You're upsetting yourself over nothing. Something's happened to her. I know it. How do you phone the police in the city? Don't say it's back to the midnight oil for you. Might be Myra Phelps again. Yes, Gideon. You left instructions, sir, that you would be informed at once of anything concerning the Hendersons and Alan Blake. Well, this just came in. All right, thanks. Well, look, I'll get over to the hotel right away myself. Oh, Nina Henderson's missing. Who? It's the American millionaire's daughter. Oh. Look, I, uh, I think I better get over there. They might start calling the embassy or something. Your daughter. Mother? Oh, Nina, where have you been? Who was that? Mother, do as they say, please. What is this? 
a kidnapping. Kidnapping? Your daughter will stay alive if you do exactly as you're told. Oh, anything, anything. We'll call you again. Meanwhile, don't inform the police. They said not to call the police. Well, you already have. Well, uncall them. Tell them it was a mistake. Tell them anything. I'll go. Mr. Henderson? Yes? Commander Gideon, Scotland Yard. Oh, um, come in, please. My wife, uh, Commander Gideon. Mrs. Henderson? How can I apologize for taking up so much of your valuable time, Commander, on such a stupid mistake? I see. Uh, where is your daughter? Uh, right here. Friend. I suppose we have the truth, shall we? Well, <clears throat> we, um, we just got a phone call. Nina's been kidnapped, but we were warned not to involve the police. And we're going to do as we're told. But, Mrs. Henderson, I have children of my own. I know how you feel. Then leave us alone. We don't want headlines shrieking, kidnapped. That's a sure way to get Nina killed. If we do what they want, then at least we have a chance of seeing her alive again. But we should listen to the commander. No, he must listen to us. We're her parents, and we'll deal with this in our way. With our police. Oh, Elliot, get him off this case. Well, Mr. Henderson? Can you keep this out of the papers? Yes. All right. I want your help. Uh, my wife needn't know. Please wait. Good night, duty officer. Stephen, Gideon. Have the matron keen standing by at the yard from now. Right. Well, Commander, I'm, uh, I'm in your hands. Right. Now, look, I want you to play along with the kidnappers. Now, don't try to deceive them. Just let me know every message, every phone call. You need me to tell you? Surely you're going to tap my phone. I'm sorry, that's not allowed over here. Well, damn it, Commander, my daughter's life is at stake. All right, I'll take a risk. Under the circumstances, I'm not going to jib at tapping a couple of phones. A couple? Yours and Alan Blake's. Why? Now, there's no time for details, Mr. Henderson, but take it from me. Alan Blake is a top-flight con man. I don't believe it. No, I don't doubt it. He's very plausible. Look, have you got a recent photograph of your daughter? Huh? Oh, uh, I think so. Look at it. It's taken on shipboard. And what was she wearing when she went out today? Um, black and white checked top coat. Uh, the same as in the photograph. She went out alone? No. With Alan. When did he return? Just before you arrived. He's down in his room now, 429. What are you going to do? I'm going to have a talk to him. Of course, if he's involved, it'll put him on his guard. But calculated risk? Yes, it is. Well, whatever you say. And please, not a word to Mrs. Henderson about Alan Blake's criminal record. I wouldn't dare. If she thought he had anything to do with it, she'd be down there before you to cut his throat. You mean she's really been kidnapped? We think so, Mr. Blake. Now then, you were with her all of the day, weren't you? I just can't believe it. Yes, I was, yes. Well, now, would you mind just running through the day for me, please? Well, we had an art binge. We went to the... Paid in the morning, the National, and then the Royal Academy. That's where? Yes, well, you know how it is. You set out to see everything, rush it, and end up seeing nothing at yes. all. Now, then, when did you leave the Royal Academy? Quarter to one. And where did you have lunch? We just bought some chocolate from a machine. Ate it while we walked. Where to? The Victorian Albert. Arriving when? About 1.30. And leaving? Nina had to be back at 6.30. We grabbed a cab. I got her back about 20 minutes early. I went up to a suite with her? No, I took the cab onto a party I was going to on South Audley Street. Uh, during the day, did you notice anyone watching or following you? <laughs> you just don't notice that sort of thing. You might in your profession, Mr. Blake. You know about me. And you've told the Hendersons? No, Mrs. Henderson is no state to absorb any further shocks at the moment. Mr. Gideon, I'm going straight now. I mean it. I love Nina. I don't... Suppose you think a guy with a record can tell the truth. Why not, Alan? It's happened before. Thank you, Mr. Blake. Police are involved now. That's all right. Just take it easy. Give it plenty of thought. Plenty of thought. Phone tapping? Now, do as I say, Lemmy. It's my decision. It's your head, too. And I won't stand by and catch it when it falls. All right, all right. Thieves just arrived over the New York wire. Uh -huh. Did you check on Audley Street? Uh -huh. There was a party. Blake was there. He arrived at 6.15 and left at 10.20. Everybody's very certain about times, aren't they? Blake even left this book at the party. Oh, very, very convenient, isn't it? Possibly. 
All right, now look, set up the big quiz for first thing tomorrow morning. I want full statements from the art gallery staffs, the cab drivers, anybody who saw the girl and Alan together. Will do. Erica, you listen to me. Erica? Hmm? If we send her back alive, she can describe us, you know. Philip Guest. Failed artist. And Erica Townsend. Who really believes that Alan Blake will marry her? Philip, an hour after we collect the money, we'll have left the country. And what if something goes wrong? And little Miss Henderson here talks. Where are we then? We are finished. It's crazy to keep her alive. Recognized in the Royal Academy, dropped his wallet in the National Gallery. He attracted as much attention as if he'd stripped naked. Now, why? I know what you're getting at. Yeah, the guilty make sure the stories are well substantiated. But why? It goes with him all the time. Yeah. Well, why is she? What? How much you register? Uh, the coat. Exactly. Rena? The same size and build and coloring as Nina Henderson wearing her clothes. Carted around London to give Blake a cast iron alibi. That period between 12.45 and 1.30 when they were walking the streets eating chop. You think that really happened? Well, supposing they went somewhere that Blake didn't tell us about. Has every policeman got these photographs? Complete distribution within half an hour. All we can do is wait and hope. How late is it? It's after 11. I didn't wake you. It was after 6 a.m. when you managed to get to sleep. No news. Only about me. Felisa, I... I can't deceive you. I've asked Commander Gideon to help us. It's for the best a decision I had to take. You've killed Nina. You've killed her. And surely it's behind my back. Oh, God, Elliot. Darling, please. He's guaranteed to keep it out of the papers. The police are equipped to deal with it. They said not to involve the police. If anything happens to Nina now, I'll hate you and curse you for the rest of my life. Well, if she had died, without the police trying to help, I'd have blamed you. Well, Constable. Sir, I was issued with a photograph of Nina Henson when I came on duty this morning. While patrolling Benson Street, I remember that I'd seen her come out of the good art shop at about 1.20 p.m. yesterday. Now, are you sure of the time? Well, I was investigating a larceny at a shop nearby, sir. Would you swear that that was the girl you saw? Wouldn't swear to it, sir. It's the coat I remember more than anything else. Very striking. You can bet your promotion it was. Was anybody with her? Yes, sir. The man on the other photograph we were given. You can swear to that? Yes, sir. Right. Thank you, Constable. Come on, David. Lemmy, I want four plain clothesmen from the local station to meet me at the top end of Benson Street. Now, call Henderson. Tell him we've got to leave, but don't build up his hopes. And don't say anything at all to Mrs. Henderson. Right, gotcha. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Williams. It makes a very good story, that does. Well, it's not very good publicity, getting robbed of 50 pounds. Aye, aye. This makes even a better story, this does. Here, you're in that, Mr. Williams. They sent one of their top cops to see you. That's Commander Gideon of Scotland Yard, that is. What did they stop the art shop for? He's not coming to see me. Commander Gideon, the name's Adams for the local paper, so uh, what's happening? Any statement to make? No. Please it, Jerry. All right, break it down. Will you take that dog? There's been something moved from here recently, a mm. chest or a trunk, maybe. Big enough to hold a body. I can't hear you. That's better. A day. Uh, yeah, all, all right, all right, you've got a deal. Uh, no, no, not a word. We... 
One million dollars. They're giving us a day to raise a million dollars in cash. Get it. And Elliot, don't go by Scotland Yard. Baby, you all right? Oh, yes, I'm all right. They want to talk to you again. Anita, wait. Firstly, Henderson, the price is one million dollars. In cash, you have a day. What? We'll give you one day to raise it. How long? I can't hear you. One day, Henderson. Yes, ma'am. Well, Professor, what do you make of the accent? Well, Robertson attempted to disguise it by flattening the tone. Not a good recording, either. The accent, Professor. Now, can you locate it? South London, possibly edging into Surrey. Probably middle class. That's all I can tell you, with reservations. Oh, thank you, Professor. Uh, hey, good to come along. Oh, no, it's been a very great pleasure. I'm afraid I haven't been very much use. Not at all it's invaluable. Very... Lemmy, would you be good enough to show the Professor out? Oh, no, sir. Uh, I'll report from the hotel. Uh, Blake still hasn't gone out. Had the midday paper delivered to him, huh? Yes, well, I hope it hurt him as much as it hurt me. I'd like to take that young news down and stick him in his own printing machine. What the professor mean? Bad recording. David, run it again. In cash, you have a day. What? We'll give you one day to raise it. How long? I can't hear you. One day, Henderson. Trains. Trains! They're holding that girl somewhere with an earshot of trains. Well, that leaves a million and a half buildings in the vicinity of Waterloo, Maribyrne, St. Pancras, Paddington. Well, well, you check them all. You're only interested in places where a large trunk or something like that has been delivered last night. Check them all in 24 hours? What are you beefing at? You've got the whole of the undermanned police force at your disposal. A room somewhere in London, near trains. some food. I'd rather go hungry. <laughs> what a rude, rebellious little child you are. I certainly wouldn't pay a million dollars for you. I wouldn't give two cents for you. Who is it? Erica. Good. Need a drink. Mm. Read the paper. You'll need half a dozen. We found the art shop. How? The police have been called in. It's obvious. All right. What do we do now? Call Alan. He said not to phone him at the hotel. Call him. I don't know what we should have done. We should have grabbed her. And killed her. No masquerade, no dragging you around London all day, no dragging her here in the middle of the night in that Victorian sarcophagus. Room 429, please. I could do it. So easy, man. So easy, I could do it. Alan? Oh, no, it's me. Hi. Uh, it's been a long time. Uh, how are you, Erica? I'm fine. Alan, look, I'm worried. I only just got back in town. I've been to America, you know, I haven't had a chance to phone you yet. No. No. Look, Alan, I'd like to see you. Look, meet me tonight at the Bohemian Club at 6 o'clock. You got it? Yes, 6. Okay. Uh, see you then. Room service. Uh, room 49. I'd like coffee for one, please. Thank you. have called in the cops if you love Nina and ever want to see her alive get a hundred thousand pounds cash and await instructions but uh, where did you get this from I got it just now on my coffee tray it was folded in a napkin 
But I, I don't understand this. Elliot's gone out right now to, to get the ransom money. A million dollars. Why have they suddenly cut it down to a hundred thousand pounds? I have no idea. And how did they know that we called in the police? I don't know. Maybe the papers. Commander Gideon's lead. All it's done is tip off the kidnappers. Oh, I knew this would happen. Oh, God, isn't it unbelievable how Gideon and Elliot are just playing with the life of my daughter? Alan. Alan, what can I do? Mrs. Anderson, you know that I love Nina, don't you? Yes. Well, it seems to me that Nina's safety is the only thing that matters. Yeah. It's not important that these people are, are caught and punished right now. Only that Nina gets back safe and sound. Why don't we go along with this? Yes, I think we should. I think the gang is getting scared now. The police have become involved. And I don't like to say this, Mrs. Henderson, but if they get scared, they they might kill me. Oh, Nina. God, don't say that. We must consider all the possibilities. The only problem is I don't have 100,000 pounds. I have. Nearly half a million dollars. The magnificent. Take them. Confident couple meeting openly like that. Blake must know the hotel's been watched. Pick them both up at the club. You know it? Uh huh. Yeah, you would. It's tempting to land Blake now on his own. Two of them together play one off against the other. Now it's worth waiting till six. Shall I phone Henderson or will you? Mr. Henderson won't be at home. He's busy raising a million dollars in cash. Not an easy thing to do in England, even for him. That's another aspect. Pay off. Yeah, it must be very near now. Sorry, Nina. That's the way it is. Quiet. I don't like it. What do you like? Nothing. We're stuck here with that girl. If the police walked in right now, what could we do? Hmm? <laughs> Nothing. It's a beg for mercy. Oh, for Pete's sake. We've been nailed, Erica, for 20 years. What about Alan, hmm? Hmm? He's <laughs> sitting in his hotel room. Nobody's breathing down his neck. You can bet on that. Hmm. How do we know he's not going to double cross us? You could just take the money and beat it. Will you shut up? Don't you? All right. All right. Oh! What are you doing in here? She tried to kill me. Oh, well, why not? You aim to kill me. Hurt me. Anyway, it's all right. Now, come on. Come on. It's all right. Be all right. Come on. Be all right. Money will be ready on time. Forget it. Look at this. What's this got to do with Nina? <laughs> you mean you don't know? You, in the great Commander Gideon's confidence? Now, cut that out! I'm under just as much a strain as you, and I'm I know. Not... They know that you've called in the police. You're not trusted by them anymore. I'm paying the ransom. 
The gang's been in touch with you. Alan. Alan! Where would he get a hundred thousand pounds? I gave him my diamonds. You what? Let's get back to your suite. Well? It's true, Mrs. Henderson. Obviously, what Blake has done is double-cross his colleagues. He's gone. Well, we don't know. I got men on the airports, railway stations, bus depots, but it's probably too late by now. Uh, Commander, what does this mean in terms of... in terms of our daughter? I'm number now, Commander. You can say what you like. Well, it makes the situation infinitely more dangerous. Blake's taken off. It won't be long before the gang find out. And your daughter becomes a dangerous liability. for you from Alan Blake. I don't understand it. Maybe you will. Who are you? Got that clearly? A million dollars in cash within one day. We'll be in touch again about the payoff. What do you say, Professor? It's her voice. It's not. I'll swear to it. You do that. Superintendent LeMaitre will take your statement. Thank you for coming along. Oh, not at all. Now, where's Nina Henderson hiding out? I don't know what you're talking about. Me and I'm not quite as persuasive as Alan Blake. That's his line, isn't it? Convincing gullible women that he's in love with them. You tell her, will you, David? Blake came to England six months ago for one purpose and one purpose only. To find a girl the same age, the same height, and about the same build as Nina Henderson. And you fitted the picture. But he's not in love with you? Never was. You know why he didn't turn up? Because he's cleared out, left you flat with a hundred thousand pounds worth of Felisa Henderson's diamonds. And left you to face the consequences alone. He's left London, we know that. You can take our word for it. He's on a plane somewhere bound for Paris, Rome, God knows where. As far away from you as he can get. Oh, God, help me. Now, if you help us, we'll help you. Now, where's Nina Henderson hiding out? In a workshop by the railway arches at Battersea. But you better be quick. She's with Philip. Philip? He's mad. He wants to kill her no matter what. We'll go in ahead and you follow us. Walk down the streets as if nothing was wrong. Do you understand? I should have telephoned him. He'll be frantic. Are you sure you feel up to going out? 
I've had three days in bed. I feel fine. <laughs> this is very kind of you, Mr. Henderson. Please, Commander, I owe you more than I can ever repay. Thank you. Ah. Hello? Yes, he is. Uh, one moment, please. Commander? I'll get you. I had hoped that just for once we could have dinner out without George being called away. Does this happen often? Invariably. Right. Thanks. The French Sorite have just arrested Alan Blake in Paris and recovered your necklace. Wonderful. I'm going to do something now that I wanted to do ever since.